Good afternoon. Welcome to the Inclement Weather Center for the City of Columbia. Thank you for joining us for today's press conference. At this time, I I'm Teresa Wilson, City Manager, and I wanted to first uh, start by extending my sincere thanks and appreciation to all who have come together with a lot of hard work to uh, reach this day. All of our partners, my staff at the City of Columbia for all of their hard work related to the opening of the Inclement Weather Center. I'm proud of the commitment and dedication demonstrated by our team at the city and by those who represent our partner agencies assembled behind me. This collaboration and partnership is a true example of how we can work together toward a common goal and implement a plan of action for a worthy cause. As we move forward to officially open the center, we will continue to work together to provide shelter and other resources to those who need assistance during periods of inclement weather. As most of you are aware, over this past weekend and on Monday evening, the City of Columbia opened the Inclement Weather Center on a temporary basis in order to meet the needs of those who needed shelter during the lower temperatures. This was accomplished due to much teamwork and we provided services to guests who needed a warm place to sleep. Today marks the first official day of our contractual agreement with the United Way and their partner agencies, and the city will be working with them this winter to provide services here at the Inclement Weather Center. The individuals here today not only represent the best in service provision, but also the benevolent and caring spirit of our community. And for that, I again say thank you. We will now hear remarks from Mayor Steve Benjamin, and he will be followed by Mac Bennett, President and CEO for the United Way of the Midlands, who will speak and also introduce representatives from the remaining partner agencies. At the close of the press conference, we will allow media representatives to ask questions and conduct one-on-one -on -one interviews as needed. Thank you. Mayor Benjamin. Thank you, City Manager. Um, um, as a city manager and, and this, um, our great staff uh, we have here today uh, will tell you and will show you uh, by deed we do a lot of things really well in the city of Columbia. Um, years of budget surplus, some fantastic economic development happening uh, in our downtown and we've proven that from public safety, uh, police and fire, uh, public works, a fantastic community development department that we can run a city with the best of them. Um, but we don't know everything. Uh, we can't do everything, at least not on our own. And that's what I believe makes this partnership so exciting and so important because it allows us to leverage remarkable talent, expertise, and resources from across Columbia to provide a coordinated and truly collaborative response, not just to shelter, uh, but to serve those among us who need it the most. Uh, this is about recognizing that homelessness isn't just a neighborhood issue, a downtown issue, a business issue, or a public safety issue. It's not just about service providers, or churches, or even city government. It's about all of us. Uh, this is a community issue. And I'm excited uh, to be here today and thankful because after all the discussion, debate, um, we're ready to move forward to meet this challenge as a community and to overcome it uh, together. Thank you. Good afternoon, thank you for coming today. I, I first want to direct my comments to uh, the city, uh, especially uh, city manager, Teresa Wilson, for uh, their work this past weekend. We did not have a contract developed. Uh, obviously, there are liability issues and other things associated with us coming in here and operating the shelter without having a final contract. So the city really stepped up, and I'd just like to congratulate uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Teresa Wilson and her staff for pulling together on short notice uh, an excellent effort to make sure that uh, people weren't out in the cold this weekend. Going forward, starting today, uh, United Way has entered into a contract with the City of Columbia and our partners make it possible. We, we don't do this work on our own. We, we work with several community partners in collaboration to make sure that we have a viable product to give back to the community. So it's really about them making this work. But we, as of today, will be operating an inclement weather center when the weather drops below 40 degrees uh, based on uh, our assessment at 12 o'clock on the day. Um, we'll be opening this center. Um, it will work as follows. 
We'll provide transportation. The only way to get here will be in uh, transportation provided by the center. That transportation will depart from the transit station at Laurel and Sumter Street uh, starting at 5.45 p.m. in the afternoon, and we'll run for about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, our guest will be able to come here, and Colonel Curry, uh, the CEO of Transitions, will talk a little bit more about uh, how the facilities will be managed here. But our guest will come here. Uh, they'll get a hot meal provided by partnership with the Salvation Army, and we appreciate uh, Major Roger Colson's team for working with us to make that available. Um, and then they will have uh, opportunity to take a shower, a, a hot shower, uh, and get prepared for the evening. Um, in the morning, we'll provide a continental breakfast to all of the residents here, and those residents will then be transported back to the transit station between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. A lot of our residents will be uh, men and women that work in the community, uh, so we want to make sure that they have access to public transportation as early as possible, uh, so they'll be transported starting at 5 a.m. Um, we will be using a previous provider for our transpor transportation services, uh, Community Pastor Care, Reverend Wade, who provided transportation a couple of years ago, will be serving that need. And as I've already mentioned, Salvation Army uh, will be prov providing the meal service uh, on site. But the most important um, piece of the puzzle here, and, and the one that was uh, um, important for us to put together was the transitions piece. Uh, Colonel Curry and his staff uh, coming together and the board of directors at transitions agreeing to support this in initiative and Colonel Curry and his staff coming together and providing the planning and the development uh, based on very little information we've had from the way that the center's been operated in the past come together to provide uh, what we needed in order to develop a budget, to develop an operating plan, uh, and schedule for operation of the center. So uh, I congratulate he and his staff for working that out, and I'd like to uh, turn the program over to him at this point. First of all, I'd like to thank the city, uh, all of the staff there that has been so helpful in getting this done. We could not have gotten this ready in the very short time period that we've done. So Ms. Wilson, thank you very much for the great work that the city staff has done. I also need to thank United Way of the Midlands. Uh, they are the contractor for the city. We are a subcontractor and their staff has done tremendous uh, amounts of work here in the last week or two trying to pull all of this together. So thank you to both of those entities and other partners as well. Uh, Transitions has been around three and a half years. Uh, we've run emergency shelter housing as well as transitional housing during that time frame. So we're comfortable that we have the expertise and the knowledge to really make this work and to really be caring for the guests that come here, which is our goal. We want to be caring and humane to everyone who shows up here and do our best to help them. Um, it's a balanced approach, it's a fair approach, and it's a humane approach. And again, a reminder that it is an inclement weather center so it will be weather dependent. So you cannot come here and stay through the winter because the shelter, the center will not be open on all days. So that's a, a reminder to the community and there are certainly ways uh, to get involved and help. Um, we encourage folks that come here, the guests that come here in the evenings, we are gonna be encouraging them to seek providers during the day to get help. The goal of uh, of us here is to A, give a place for people to stay, a hot meal, a hot shower, so a good place for the evening, but during the day, they're back up going to providers and trying to get help. The ideal status would be for them to move in to the other providers and get help there, because we want them getting help during the day, not just coming here at night. So the goal is get help and get them off the streets permanently which is our goal at Transitions. Um, some basic info that folks may want to know in the community. The center tell folks who need help to go to the transit station between 545 and 7 o'clock. That's when they can get on the van to come down here. They have to ride a van to come down to get help on any given evening. There will be signs posted at the transit station, the library and Transitions, stating that 
the center is open that evening. We will base that call at around 12 o'clock noon and base it on the National Weather Service forecast. So no one, is, no one else's forecast matters. It's the National Weather Service that we're looking at to get that number, is it 40 and below for that given evening. Uh, men and women can come here 18 or older. If they have families, uh, we need to try to get them into one of the other providers. So again, 18 or older, men or women, this is, this is an adult facility. Um, there's no need to call. Just go to the transit station, get on the vans. They'll be taking the first 240 people that show up. On most given nights, the number will be well below that, and we'll transport everybody down here and help them. So there's no need to call for a reservation or anything like that. Go to the transit station between 545 and 7 o'clock, and you will get help. And finally, for volunteers, uh, John Dawkins is here in the brown coat. Uh, he's, he is a person to contact about volunteers as well as Salvation Army for meals. So between the two entities, we will get you plugged in if you want to volunteer from the community. Uh, with that said, that would be donations, time, uh, anything of that nature. The folks are standing by, and we welcome any help uh, that you can provide. Uh, thank you, and I think right now we're going to open it for questions. Uh, we served 59 people on the first night, the city did, and then 73 on the second night, and then 70 on the third night. And again, that was the city running the shelter there because of the snow and the very quick, you know, Mother Nature has a vote in all of this. Um, we expect things to be a, a success this year, and we'll um, uh, we'll use it as a model uh, for moving forward. Uh, if if things go as as planned, I'm sure uh, we will try to do the same thing and hopefully improve upon it based on lessons learned. Uh, it it does not. That will be a separate contract. Uh, this has taken precedent over uh, our other negotiations with the city, um, but the uh, coordination of services will be a separate contract. It's been open three nights. Now, you could be a couple, but you'll have to stay in the women area or the men area. You have to go to the transit station. And that's, that's been that way in previous years, too. That's, there's nothing new there. We do have uh, contractors that are helping us. I've mentioned Salvation Army. They're doing the food aspect, uh, the transportation. Mac mentioned them. That is contracted out as well. We didn't talk about G4S. They are doing the security here. And of course, they'll be coming through right here, entering the facility with the metal detector, a wand as well. And we're not set up completely for that because of the press conference. But the security will be here the entire time that the facility is open and as well as the staff. And our staff's trained well at trying to de-escalate situations. So we don't anticipate problems, but if there is a problem, we do have security folks here. And again, our trusted Columbia Police Department is always on call uh, should we need help from them. By historical records, most of the time, the 240 beds that are here will handle everything. On a given night, if we do have to look at something, we've already talked to Oliver Gospel. We'll be talking to them about using their facility and transporting some overflow up to there. 
Anything after that would be the city's call, but I think between this facility and Oliver Gospel, we'll be able to take care of what we need to do. The, the hours for the clients are 6 o'clock in the morning, so the guests can come here and arrive at 6 o'clock in the morning, and they'll depart. Um, that didn't come out right. Let's, let's start over on that one, because we're going to be here in the evening, and they'll arrive at 6 o'clock in the evening and depart by 7.15 in the morning. The staff will be here a little bit longer on each end of that to make sure we're ready and properly closed.